Hello, this is Deborah Baker with Trusted CISO. This came from a subscriber's request. They want me to go through the CISSP from start to finish. So I'll be working on this the next few months. And this is Security and Risk Management Part 1. So we're doing the CISSP in 10 minute snippets. So we start out with CIA and we're not talking about the government spy agency either. So this is, this is the basis, the foundation for cybersecurity. And it's referring to confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So for confidentiality, what we're talking about typically for IT security controls, we are talking about encryption. But this also could be signing a non-disclosure agreement and making sure that you don't leak out confidential information of a company's. But as far as for IT security and digital security, we're talking about encryption. So information is encrypted, whether it's on your local hard drive, you make sure that your hard drive is encrypted, or for any remote session. So for example, you want to use TLS 1.2 or above. Now, integrity has to talk about, you can actually read the data, you can see the data, but you know that it has not changed. And so this can be done through either using a hashing algorithm or a digital signature. And we'll get more into all of this later on. If you actually have a digital signature and it's more than just, um, you know, being able to write your name in, you know, through an app or digitally, but behind the scenes, there's actually a hashing algorithm that is doing a, you can think of it as a digital fingerprint of the data. And when you send the data off the document or the email and it gets to the next person, there's a check done. If anything was changed, then it will give you an error. So that gives you that along with X.509 certificates can actually give you non-repudiation where if somebody signs that digital email or contract, they can't go back and say that they didn't sign it. And this is all secured through these digital signature and algorithms. Now availability means you can get to that web server. You can get to that server. You can get to your data. So if something's down and you can't get to it, then you don't have availability. So ideally you want 24 by seven availability so that your systems are running and accessible and your company can run. So now we have AAA. Well, it actually has more than just the three A's and we're gonna go into this, but this is what it's referring to. You can think of it just quickly as authentication, authorization, and accountability. But within these um, security concepts, we also have identification and audit. So identification, when you go and log into your system, let's say your computer system, you are identifying yourself and that's with your username and your user ID. Could also be, you know, with your key card badge and, you know, more basically like your, it could be your driver's license and things like that also. But as far as IT security, we're talking about username and user IDs. So for authentication, we have passwords, pins, and multi factor authentication. So when you log in, you're actually doing two things you're identifying yourself with your username and you're authenticating with your password. And, you know, multi factor authentication also, you know, a pen number from your Google Authenticator, let's say. Authorization is what access now do you have? So typically we're talking about role-based access controls, also RBAC, known as RBAC. Do you have permissions? Um, is there allow, deny? Do you have auditor, admin, user? So what sort of access do you have with that you know, on that system. Audit is that everything's being logged, all the events that are occurring. It's also considered monitoring. And under this, you also have third party audits. So, and that goes into accountability. So we have these loggings of events. Now, what are we doing with them? Are we reviewing them on a regular basis? Do we have a SIM? that's going to send us an alert if there's an anomaly or something that we need to look at. And then we'll also do um, role-based access control reviews. So typically these are done quarterly to make sure 
you know, if somebody's left the company, there should be a process in place to delete that account after so many days and to remove all the access controls that they had. But there'll be the separate review to make sure this was done quarterly. And you can also have actual audits done. A third party audit organization can come in and verify, you know, let's say for SOC 2 and ensure that you are, you know, following your security policy, for example, and that you're taking action and doing these, you know, doing these things. And code of conduct, which is what you would sign when you are hired at a company, that falls under accountability also. Now, encryption. Encryption is the process of using a cipher to make data unreadable. And, you know, in modern days, we're talking about um, mathematical equations that um, basically we've got algorithms that encrypt the data. You don't just want to hide the data. You want to use an actually, you know, industry acceptable, you know, AES, 128 or 256, for example, for symmetric cryptography, you could do um, TLS version 1.2. If um, for session data, SSH v2 and above, again, for session data. So you don't just want to roll your own crypto or just come up with something, well, well we're just going to hide this data because that way it's easily um, broken and that is called obfuscation. Now, historically, encryption is actually been around for thousands of years. The first known encryption was done by the Spartans. They used a, a specific cipher to send military messages. So that way, if they're intercepted, they wouldn't understand what it was. We saw this also in modern day for World War II with the German Enigma cipher. And once that was broken, then it turned the war. And there's a really great, you know, movie about that. So I definitely recommend watching that. And then for modern day, we're talking about using these mathematical operations. You've got your symmetric key, which is quantum secure, and that would be like AES-128 or 256. Asymmetric keys, which is the public-private key, and this also ties into your X.509 certificate with the and um, being tied into your public key, and that is quantum breakable. Now they're they're already working on quantum secure versions of this, so don't worry. We're still about 10 to 20 years out where this is actually going to be a problem, but I do recommend going to the CryptoDoneRight.org site. We just um, posted an article on this and what your concerns should be around it and how to prepare. So any sort of change can bring risk. So this includes mergers where two companies are joined, acquisitions where a company buys another company, divestiture where a company is going to be selling off a division or parts of the company. All of these cause more risk. And Marriott is a great example because there was a big hack at Marriott in 2018. And it turned out they had um, acquired Starwood Resorts and Starwood had actually been hacked several years earlier. Nobody decided they didn't do a check. They just, you know, I mean, they looked at all the financials, but they didn't look at the cybersecurity. You know, what were they doing? Were, did they have a security policy? Were they meeting it? Were they patching? You know, were they doing their due diligence? I mean, I don't know what happened, in, you know, in these details, but I think a lot of times companies just think of the financials and they don't think about cybersecurity risk. And so once they actually join the network, between Starwood and Marriott, guess what? The hackers moved into the Marriott network and it wasn't found for quite a while that the hackers were there and that had been there. And it was 500 million customers data that was stolen. Now, change management also covers any sort of change in your system. It could be patching. It could be you're going to put a new system in and there are specific steps you need to take. So you need to plan for it. You need to decide, you know, when are you going to do it? You're going to do it during off hours. You'll put this into a, you know, you'll create a ticket and a system that will be reviewed. It could either be peer reviewed or just the system. Um, somebody else will look at the change, review it and say, okay, yeah, I think this, you know, we're, we're good with this. If it's a more, um, 
impacting critical change, there may, you may actually have to talk to somebody, you know, and review it, discuss what you're going to be doing, why you're making this change. And in larger companies, they'll actually have a change management review board, but it could also be more ad hoc where just somebody else in your department reviews it and things like that. So you need to, so once it's been approved, you need to test it. So you need to test it in the lab. So if you're going to do an upgrade, you're going to patch your system. You're going to send out patches like to all the laptops in your company, for example. You want to test this in your lab and make sure it doesn't break anything because it has happened and it doesn't matter whether it's Microsoft or anything else. There are patches that are released that actually will break your system. So you need to test it and you need to have a plan to roll back. So if something goes wrong and unexpectedly, even if you did test it in the lab, you need to have a plan to roll back to get the system back in up and running and then you have to send out a user notification so you want to let people know that this change that it's going to be offline during this specific time so thank you so much for watching remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and hit the notification button thanks for watching